degrees with the corona and the moon up in the sky. At the end of the eclipse, the sun starts to reappear along one edge of the moon, and it very often starts appearing through the deepest valleys of the moon first in what's called Bailey's Beads, as the, moon, as the sun starts re-emerging. Within seconds, it forms the diamond ring effect. Uh, the corona fades from view as, the, as daylight returns, and at that point, if you've been successful with good weather, you'll be asking everybody around you, when is the next total solar? <laughs> Seeing a total eclipse is something I've, I've seen people, after the eclipse is over, falling on their knees and weeping. It is such a dramatic, spectacular event. I saw my first total eclipse back in 1970. Um, I had known about the eclipse for half a dozen years uh, because I had read about it in my little picture book of astronomy that was going to come to the United States along the East Coast, and I thought, oh, this is going to be these once-in-a-lifetime experiences. <clears throat> I've got to go to this eclipse. I think I'd only had my driver's license for about three or four months. I convinced my parents to let me drive 600 miles to get into the path of totality. I read all about the eclipse. I was prepared for this. <laughs> uh, I even had a little telescope, managed to get some pictures of the eclipse. But after the eclipse was over, I was dumbfounded. It was like nothing I had read about. It was so incredible that I knew I had to go to another eclipse. Two years later, I was up in Canada, <laughs> which was passing the Gospel Bay Peninsula, and I discovered one of the hard, hard knocks of eclipse chasing. Sometimes it's cloudy, and I was clouded out in 1972. Well, Canada's pretty close. I could drive to that eclipse. I certainly can't travel halfway around the world to go to an eclipse. The following year, I found myself in Mauritania, the Sahara Desert, <laughs> the same eclipse, and this has led to a lifelong pursuit of viewing eclipses all over, Indonesia in 83, uh, just a, a quick sample, why go to all these eclipses? What's so special? Once you've seen one, haven't you seen them all? Well, for me, it's the sun's corona. It's dynamic, it's different at every single eclipse. In fact, with spacecraft that we've got in orbit now, like SOHO, we know that the corona is different not only from day to day, but from hour to hour. It's this outpouring of material from the sun that spreads out into the inner solar system, forms the solar wind, and produces around Earth what we call as space weather. It produces the aurora borealis, for instance, and magnetic storms that can interfere with, with uh, spacecraft communication and, and Earth-based communication. So the corona is connected to us. It's part of our ecosystem in the solar system. And it, if, you, if you think about it that way, it's also the largest object in the solar system because it extends from the surface of the sun out and fills the solar system. Well, a recent eclipse, relatively recent, was one that took place in 1999, passing right through Central, uh, Central Europe and into, uh, into Turkey. And I went to Turkey with, with a number of uh, people on a tour. So I think we had about uh, 90 people. And we only, out of that 90 people, maybe four of them were professional astronomers. So the rest of them were just amateur astronomers or people who just wanted to see this, this event, this total solar eclipse that they'd heard about and read so much about they wanted to see it. And I think one of the best ways for me to try to explain what seeing an eclipse is like is to show you a very short documentary film taken at this eclipse. Thank you, but that'll work around. 